Hi, I would like to show you how to develop the function isPrime using a test-driven development. So the first thing to break our code, because that's the first thing we should do, is expect that the function um, does something. To express that, you use expect silent, um, which is part of the test that library. So we're going to expect sign if we call is prime with a number say let's seven is prime for example seven is a prime number we expect it to do something so let's run the code and here we got our first error so let's fix this with the minimum amount of work possible so it's a function and does that does nothing um, still, we didn't fix it because uh, apparently there's an argument, so we just, we just put an argument x there, bam, we finished it. Now we're going to make it do something, and you can start wherever you like. I like to do the trivial cases first. So first I expect that 1 is not a prime. So prime numbers, they start from 2. So is, uh, 1 is not a prime. Alright, so I broke the code because it returns something else. Um, so now I need to fix it and I'm going to simply return false. And now all tests pass and I can check it in in GitHub. Now let's do something. Uh, so let's see. So 0 is not a prime. Uh, minus 100 is not a prime. So that all goes well. Um, however, uh, 2 is a prime. So now we need to do. Uh, f now we need to fix both. So let's do something like this. If x is less than two, less than two, then we return false. Else we return true. You don't need to write else. You also don't need to write return at the end. So this makes all tests pass. So that's great. And um, still our, all our tests work, so I can try again if 0 is indeed not, still not a prime. All right, so let's take another example. So for example, 4 is not a prime because it's dividable by 2. And now we need to start our first real thinking. So we're going to, um, so you can do this very sloppily. So I will do this very sloppily. So I'm going to do a for loop. It starts from 2, from um, for i. Um, so for i is... Um, so I'm going to make a sequence of divisors. Divisors. And that goes from... So you can do this in many ways. It's irrelevant how you do it. It's a sequence starting from 2 and goes to x minus 1. So let's say, uh, so I'm now I'm just going to try this out. So, so here we have a sequence. Um, I, ca I can't test it already a bit, like uh, let's use x equals 4. I put this in memory. Now I get the divisors, so 4 will be divided by 2 and 3. And if there's no remainder when dividing by this, it's not a prime. So for a divisor in divisors, so I'm going to loop over all the divisors. If the number I put in modulo to the divisor, modulo to the divisor equals zero. So that means if I divide it by this number, then there's no remainder left. For example, if you divide four by two, that fits twice and that fits exactly, so there's no remainder. So if the divisor um, x modulo by device equals zero, that means you can return false. You can say, no, this is not a prime. Else you still return true. So let's see how this works. I feel this is it, but let's see if, uh, if I'm really correct. Oh, so this means that two is not a prime anymore. So, and that's explain like I can understand. So I'm going to put x to 2. And I'm just going to take a look at all the divisors. So the divisors are now 2 and 1. 
So two will be divided by two and by one, and dividing by one always works. So what I need to do is something like if x equals two, return true. So I needed to add this if statement. There are probably smarter ways as well, but this is just one way to do it. And now all my tests pass again. So let's see if I can break it in any way. So I, I, I'll be cleaning up now, like I don't like these x's. So let's see if, um, for example, um, um, 3 is a prime, all right, I'm going to add that. 5 is a prime, uh, 7 is a prime, 13 is a prime, all right, so that appears to work. Let's see if I, if I can detect some numbers that are not prime, 6, 8, uh, 9 is not prime, all right. So I feel I've tested this rather well. I feel this works. So let's add something else because I also expect some proper error messages. For example, if I determine if the word nonsense is a prime, I expect an error message. And I expect the error message to be x must be a number. Now you can use any message you want. Uh, you can even name the function or whatever you like. But I expect this error. So now the user gets this error, non-numeric argument to binary operator. And that's very unhelpful for a beginner R programmer. So it's very good that I uh, add this error message. It will help the user of my function, including me, um, to, to get a better idea what goes wrong. So let's add that as well. So if x is not a numeric. So if x is not a numeric, then we're going to stop with an error message, which is this error message. Load the function, let's see if everything still works. Great, so I fixed that one. So now we're going to do, and um, this will be a decision, um, this will be an architectural decision. So let's say when I ask for two numbers, if those are prime, then you could argue, well, yeah, this is R, everything is vectorized. So this should return a false and a true. So it returns a vector of booleans. One is, a, so one is not a prime, two is a prime. So that should return false or true. On the other hand, you could argue, well, in, in, when you say this in English, it doesn't make sense. Like you say to the computer, dear computer is one and two prime. Um, that's invalid English. So then you would say a function like are those primes or are prime, and that indicates a plural in English. If you ask your computer, dear computer, are one and two prime, that does make sense. Uh, but for um, if we write our function is prime, then that doesn't make sense in English. So we're going to pick this way, but you can pick the other one as well. And the error message should be that x must be one number. So if I run it, um, there's also a very unhelpful error message here. So, um, so I also fix that. So I'm going to add an if statement if the length of x is different than one, then x must be one number. So let's run it. Bam, fixed it. So now we're going to do some corner cases um, and R has some. For example, uh, null is one of them. Right, that works, so I don't need to keep that test. And A works. Now let's do inf. Um, so uh, let uh, so take doing take doing the prime of inf. I feel that's a very long word. Um, it already gives an error. Let's see what the error message is. It says two must be a finite number. No, um, I want to make the error message. And I will follow a bit like what, what is currently going on. X must be a finite number. So if I do is prime on infinite, then I want the error message to be X must be a finite number. Now it gets two must be a finite number. And the user has no idea what this two means because it's part of this function as uh, sec default. Uh, a beginner doesn't know this and you also forget sometimes. So this is more helpful. So let's add that as well. So if X is infinite, if is, oh, if X dot is infinite, 
x must be a finite number. Well, let's see if now all the tests pass works. So I feel um, this is done. I have no idea how to break this anymore. So I would check this in on GitHub. Um, I will uh, put it in an R package, uh, but it's definitely good to go. So um, in the end, you should put this in a package. So you need to add documentation with some examples. Um, also document what X can be. It must be a number. It must be one finite number. Uh, you want to add continuous integration, those kind of things. But using an R script for now, I can't do better than this. So maybe one day a user finds a bug in this code that I just written without any preparation. Um, that's just fine. He or she sends me a bug report with a test that fails and I agree. Also, you can uh, simplify also the speed of this. Um, so I do, uh, so I now go to, uh, I, I loop from two to the, to, to the value of the, of the, the inputted value minus one. But the, the, you can also take the square root plus one. So that will speed it up. So if you want to speed it up, that's great. All these tests should still work. Everyone agrees on that. Uh, but you should make a test that indeed your new version is faster. And um, yeah, you also need to set like how much faster uh, to see. Uh, so that, so usually I aim for, uh, so if it's only 10%, then you could argue, well, mm, that's not worth it. But definitely for bigger values, this will work uh, a bit faster. If you take the square root of x plus one, instead of x minus one. Because after going dividing by more than half the value, yeah, you know you will never get a, a hit anymore. You will never get a module of zero anymore. All right, so this is my video about is prime. I hope it was very helpful and I wish you a very good day. Bye.